music system basically did away with the tonality that all music had been uh, written under for about the previous 250 years and substituted this idea that instead of basing music on a key and on specific major or minor scales, you would instead take all 12 chromatic notes and you would arrange them in an order. You see in this example, we have our order is E natural, F natural, G natural, then down to D flat, up to G flat, etc. And basically, this, this is called the prime. It's called a tone row, and this order is called the prime. You would write a new row for every piece that you would compose. You could also arrange the tone row backwards. You can see this over here. This is called the retrograde if you have it backwards. And then you could also transpose it. P6 means you take the prime, but you move it by six half steps. So we're moving it from E natural to B flat by a tritone, six half steps. You can also have the retrograde of that. You can also invert it, but you're inverting the intervals. So in this case, we start on an E natural and we go up a whole step. So here we're starting, I'm sorry, go up a half step. And here we start on E natural and we go down a half step. So all these different ways that you can use to arrange your tone row. And then the rule is that you would write your piece of music using the row in order. So here's the first four measures of Schoenberg's Piano Suite, which is the first 12-tone piece that he ever wrote. You can see he starts with the prime, E natural, F natural, G natural, performing those in order, 1 through 12. Underneath that, in the right hand, he's using the prime transposed by that tritone. And again, we're going through these in order. You can play the notes at the same time, but they do have to be played in the order of the tone row. So with this concept, Schoenberg thought he had completely reinvented tonality and even said that I've assured the supremacy of German music for the next hundred years. Uh, he was wrong. Uh, people don't tend to enjoy 12-tone or dodecaphonic music because it's very difficult to understand until you listen to it quite a few times and start to hear the, uh, the tone row and the way that the composers actually arrange the music.